Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Garnot Wagner, who's a climate economist at Columbia Business School. Professor Wagner, good to see you. Good to see you. So we are dealing with, of course, a lot of um, the smoke from the wildfires here in New York City across a lot of the U.S. You've looked a lot at the, at the economic impact. Give me some sense of the work you do and where this fits into it. Um, I mean, to be fair, right, even though we all focus on wildfires right now, I am uh, far from a wildfire specialist, uh, even though I, you know, like to play one on TV. <laughs> um, but, and this is, I guess, the big but in all of this, right? Um, it's amazing to see how the direct effects when they become really visible, like they currently yep. are, right? Like, you know, yesterday mm -hmm. in New York City, 2.30 p.m., right? Like this yellow cloud moving in and mm -hmm. we all, right? We're literally choking in this pollution. Um, suddenly um, realize that, whoops, maybe there is something to these statistics, right? And when I say statistics, uh, so yeah, here's some, you know, economic consequences of mm -hmm. um, outdoor air pollution kills around 10 million people a year yeah, globally, right? And, you know, it's the, the old, you know, trite statement that, you know, a million deaths is a statistic, one is a tragedy, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, right? So welcome to New York City yesterday afternoon when, uh, you know, you go walk down First Avenue with your mask on, uh, your eyes are watering and you see a couple ambulances chasing up to Bellevue Hospital and, well, no idea whether it was related to right, the heart attack caused by this particular wildfire. But, yeah, there are very direct impacts um, that go well beyond, right, sort of the, oh, you know, GDP might take a 0.01% hit because of, right? Uh, no, there are lives at stake. And yes, of course, that is also the right economic consequences. Well, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that you are a climate economist. So, I mean, talk about the genesis of that. Obviously, now we have terms like climate math. When I talk to insurers, they talk about what can and cannot be insured now in light of some of the if, if not, maybe sometimes lack of predictability, sometimes very predictable consequences they see of climate change. How do you marry those two together in, in terms of your own profession? Well, OK, so about 20 years ago, right? So I, you know, I've, I've never done anything else in my life, I can tell you. And, you know, 15, 20 years ago, when you told someone you were a climate economist, it was basically, wait, pick a side, right? Like, which is it? Do you care mm -hmm. about the climate or you care about, you know, employment rates and exchange rates? Um, I don't think, you know, very few people consider it an oxymoron these days because climate damages are real, are very vividly felt, right? Because climate risk is financial risk, right? None mm -hmm. of this is news anymore. And yes, the solutions too are very much economics, broadly speaking, right, rechanneling market forces in the right direction. Um, and now that's not just sort of the simple, right, climate economic instruments that economists like to talk about. It's sort of mm -hmm. pricing the negative externality in the all-encompassing sense. And frankly, it all comes together with this one number that... Um, you know, very few people have heard of, but is probably the most important single metric as it relates to climate change, which is the social cost of carbon. Basically, mm. what does each ton of CO2 emissions um, actually cost over its lifetime in the atmosphere? Right. So, you know, you and I on what average, do you average calculate American, it to be? Uh, so it's a couple hundred dollars at least that each ton, and to be clear, right, so this is not an abstract number, it's, uh, it's the average American emits about 16 of these uh, tons of CO2 per year, uh, average European, by the way, around eight or so. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, life in Europe isn't all that bad either, right? So yes, there are ways to um, cut these emissions dramatically without, frankly, 
life changing all that much. Um, uh, well, each of these tons of CO2 causes at least those hundred, two hundred dollars per ton of CO2 in damages. Um, and that's the problem, right? Because, you know, when you board a flight, when I bought a flight to um, see my parents in Austria, um, uh, that's a ton of CO2, a metric ton of CO2 emissions for that one ticket, right? Not the whole plane. Really? One ticket. Okay. Um, and they now look passenger. for 